Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk about hopper locking for a furnace ray. So basically, if it's worth it to power hoppers that would point into a furnace while they don't transfer items. Can I really say so much? It's definitely worth it in terms of lag to do this. But I would also say 95 to 99% of the players don't need to bother with that at all. So I'm just doing this video for science to give you some numbers to see how much would actually help you. And in the end, um, yeah, I'm gonna go over some examples in which cases it might be useful, but there's probably also a lot of alternatives you could do instead of hopper locking. All right, so let's try to get some numbers. So I'm using carpet mod to get some info how much lag would be caused by 1000 hoppers, for example. So I'm just using the tick health command, and then I'm also gonna do a tick warp to speed this up. All right, so at the end, this will tell us how much lag is caused by exactly 1000 hoppers that we have here. Okay, so we need to look at block entities. So we got 1.167 MS that is caused by 1000 hoppers. So the absolute numbers are not really that important. Uh, definitely depends on your system or server. Um, but in my case, I could have around 50,000 hoppers that are not locked or have a, a compost on top. Uh, before the game starts lagging. So you can actually have a ton of hoppers before it becomes an issue. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple tests to see how different configurations would influence the lag that is caused by the hopper. So here we just got now furnaces in front. So the hopper will try to transfer items if it has any into the furnace. So I already ran a test. Um, having yeah, the hoppers pointing into something doesn't really affect them. So we still have around one MS cost, but hoppers and the furnaces would now also cause a little bit of lag, but it's almost negligible. So I was curious if having an item in the hopper would influence the results somehow, but it seems like the answer is no. So we're still at around 1.12 milliseconds per tick. So that's kind of interesting. If the hopper is completely filled, the lag that is caused by the hopper is actually a lot lower. So we're now at 0.36 milliseconds per tick. So that means around 33% of the original lag. So this is probably caused because the hopper can't pick up any items on top anymore. So it doesn't need to check um, yeah, for items. So this is probably basically the same as having composters on top. So I also tested this in combination with furnaces that are completely filled with coal. End results were at around 0.48 milliseconds. So there's already something we could transfer over to an actual furnace array. So you could reduce the lag that is caused by the furnace array by just having the fuel hopper always filled with coal. But just for comparison's sake, I also tested a setup with composters on top of hoppers. So the idea here is that we have an inventory above the hopper, so therefore the hopper doesn't need to check for item entities above itself. And the result was pretty much similar to just having a filled hopper, 0.33 MS. Right, so next let's see how much lag is caused by 1000 hoppers that are getting powered. It's actually not zero, but it's significantly lower. So we're down to 0.06 MS, so around 95% less than with just a normal hopper. All right, so we can already come to two conclusions. So the best hopper is a hopper that is not being loaded in the first place. So I didn't delete all the other hoppers that they're testing with. They're still existing in my world, but they're causing zero lag because they're just not loaded. So this is definitely preferable over hopper locking to just have a furnace array not exactly in your base. And yeah, the second thing is it's definitely worth it to do this hopper locking, so powering the hoppers of a furnace system you're not currently using. Uh, but you also need to take the absolute numbers into consideration. So even in my case, having a thousand hoppers is not really a problem. In, for single player, you can make quite a furnace ray out of this, probably faster than you'll ever need. But for science, I want to figure out two more things. So the first one would be if dynamic hopper loading is useful. So locking and unlocking while the furnace array is running. And also want to test um, multiple approaches to the hopper locking and see what's the lag friendliest way to do this. Right, so there's basically also two approaches to hopper locking in the first place. So the first one would be uh, you have a, just a static system and a switch. You would lock the hoppers while you're not using the furnace array. While you're using the furnace array, you just unlock everything. Then once you're done, you lock everything again. Um, this is something you probably want to do if you build your furnace array in your main base, or for example, in our 4 before challenge, there's no way around having the furnace ray loaded all the time. Um, but it's definitely preferable to 
just not build your furnace array where it's loaded all the time because then it's even causing less lag. So the only benefit if you would build this in a remote area to lock all your hoppers would be in the two minutes uh, yeah, it takes to go to your furnace and then leave again, you would cause slightly less lag. Um, yeah, I don't think that's actually worth it. Okay, next let's check if turning the hopper locking off and on again while the furnace array is running is worth it. So on one hand, of course, we get less lag because the hoppers are locked most of the time. On the other hand, turning the redstone dust lines in this case on and off again would also create some lag. So what's actually better in the end? So we're doing this every 10 seconds because it takes 10 seconds for a furnace to smelt one item. So every 10 seconds you would need to put in a new item into the furnace. Of course, this was those two guys. So there's the smoker and the blast furnace. Now we're actually not gonna really consider those. That only takes five seconds to smelt an item. So the hopper locking is probably less worth it because we need to do it more often. But I don't think it's really relevant. So I've been playing a lot of Minecraft and so far we didn't really make a huge smoke of a furnace array or blast furnace array because the uses of those are really limited. So in case you're a technical player, that's probably the target audience for a huge furnace array. Uh, you probably also have farms. And well, what do you need the blast furnace for? Raw iron and that stuff that you get from mining. People usually have iron farms, gold farms, copper farms, etc. So the blast furnace is hardly needed. Same goes for the smoker. You usually have your hockland farm, which is this cooked pork shop immediately, or you have your chicken farm, you get roasted chicken immediately. So the only real use so far that I had for the smoker was when we played modded and had auto crafting to automatically turn yeah, the kelp into kelp blocks. That's the only time so far I used several smokers. But apart from that, if you have a huge furnace array, then you actually needed to smelt cobble or to smelt stone again, to smooth stone or to smelt sand to get glass. So most uses are actually just the default furnace and the other two are not really that useful. Okay, then one more note before we look at the results. So it's using really the simplest method of locking the hoppers, just the redstone dust line, then the repeater every 16 blocks. Of course, those hoppers aren't even really locked, but that's probably the easiest way to do it. Okay, so let's take a look at the results. Um, so we need to take a look at the schedule ticks. Let's get a lag caused by the redstone dust, then repeaters, and then block entities. So if we sum this up, we're at around 0.5 MS. On the other hand, if you don't do the dynamic hopper locking, we're around 1.1 MS. So in case you actually use a single line to lock two hoppers, even the dynamic hopper locking seems to be worth it. And that's considering the hopper that would put the items into the furnace we smelted every 10 seconds. So this hopper locking and unlocking will be even more worth it in most cases for the fuel hopper depending on the fuel type, of course. So you could do the unlocking and locking every 80 seconds for the charcoal, because one coal lasts uh, for smelting eight items. In case of blaze rods, uh, 120 seconds. In case of the kelp block, 200 seconds. And in case of the coal block, it's even every 800 seconds this would be necessary. I also want to take a look at this again with an even larger scale. So instead of using 1,000 hoppers, we're now using 10,000 hoppers and 10,000 furnaces. Right, so I already did the test with the redstone line being activated every 10 seconds. And now we're getting schedule ticks 2.5 ms and block entities 5.8 ms. On the other hand, just having the hoppers unlocked would result in 14 ms. Right, so those numbers definitely confirm what we got with the smaller scale test. All right, so the next step is trying to optimize the hopper locking system. Definitely the redstone dust and repeater system is the simplest but probably not the lag friendliest. I already did a test. I just ran this now without the hoppers and furnaces and it came out at 1.8 ms. Okay, let's compare this with a redstone dustless version. Especially in older versions, redstone dust was known to be very laggy and people put a lot of effort trying to avoid it. But in recent versions, this problem was reduced by a lot. Okay, so here we got a setup where we yeah, power a dropper with an observer on top and basically shoot the item into the other dropper and then we shoot the item back with another observer line on the side and we just use the comparators here on the side to power the hoppers. 
Okay, I already ran the test and this is actually causing more lag than just the Redstone dust line version. If you look at scheduled ticks, we're already at 2.24 ms compared to the 1.8. And for some reason, we also have more lag for the spawning algorithm and unloading. I can't really explain that. Maybe carpet mod is not that accurate when it comes to stuff like that. Or there's just something going on that I can't explain. But what we should really look at would be the block entities, because we use some pistons here, um, and the schedule ticks. And here we got another dustless version that is way worse than the dust version in terms of lag. So we got redstone blocks that are being pushed around. Yeah, kind of no surprise that this would cause more lag. You look at block events, 2.6 ms, and then some schedule ticks as well with the observers, 0.4, so about three in total. So next, let's take a look at this version here. We got a dot powering adjacent blocks here. So if you have a hopper line, all of those would be powered either with a dot directly or the, the blocks on the side. And we just have comparators here on top that will power the block. You could also maybe put it on top here. Depends on your space requirements or what you prefer. Also with using signal strength one, because in all the versions of the game, this had an advantage. A high signal strength redstone dust was causing more lag in getting depowered than a low signal strength one. Right, so we already got the results. At schedule ticks, we're at 0 0.881 ms. So this is a lot better than the simple redstone dust line. Also wondering if maybe having repeaters instead of comparators would actually be better, even if you would have the high signal strength redstone dust power. And a bit surprising that it's actually the case. So by having repeaters here, we're now down to 0 0.7 ms instead of the 0 0.88 we had before. This would also have the advantage that you could maybe adjust the timings a little bit by adjusting the repeater delay, which you could do with the comparator, of course. Should we do another test and see if maybe having another dust instead of repeaters even be better? I wonder. And the answer seems to be no. This is causing a slightly more lag than having more repeaters. Okay, now let's do a final comparison with an actual furnace system again. So we got two furnaces, hopper on top, and then this repeater line here in between. So in case we don't lock it, maybe let's just take a look at the total lag. We have 2.6, and if we do the dynamic locking, we're down to 1.6. All right, time to come to conclusion. So I definitely say it's advantageous to do the hopper locking, but I still believe for 99% of the players, hopper locking is definitely not necessary. All right, let's go a couple of scenarios. So let's say this is your furnace system. Should you be locking it? All right, so you're somebody that plays on a server, has all the knowledge about hopper lag and hopper locking, and you decide to lock your two hoppers. So first of all, I have to say, I like you. I mean, you know that it's probably not gonna make a big difference, but you do what you know is right. I mean, every little lag reduction technically helps, although this will never be noticeable. There's gonna be the other players that have 500 cats in their base to scatter creepers away, or they have a wool farm in their base that they use 1% of the time, but causes 100% of the lag. Uh, that yeah, do a million times more lag than you would cause with two hoppers, but you still contribute to a noble cause by reducing the lag. So it's really not necessary, but you can do it if you're really a social person. On the other hand, if you would do this in single player, this would definitely raise some eyebrows. Okay, let's take a look at the next situation. Let's say this is your furnace ray in your base. Should you worry about hopper locking or is it really necessary? So in most cases, again, no. You would already save more lag if you kill two random cows that run around your base. So definitely not necessary because overall it hardly causes any lag. Nobody will actually notice much. Okay, let's take a look at the next situation. You have a furnace ray like this one here, 144 furnaces. Right, so in case you're playing on a busy server with like maybe 20 people on all the time, you should already not build this at your base anymore because this would yeah, create a little bit of lag and if everybody would do it, this just wouldn't be nice. So there's already in a scale, just build it somewhere remote, put the items you want to smelt in the shulker boxes, quickly go there, um, and, and smelt it over there. So it's definitely something you should maybe consider in case you're just playing with your friends. This is still not causing a lot of lag, probably the same lag as five villagers. So nothing to be worried about. And in case you're playing single player, yeah, also not really something you need to worry about. Okay, so next situation, you want a furnace array like this one here, 1,728 furnaces. In case you're playing on a server of random players, 
don't build this. I mean, this was not nice towards the others to uh, cause a lot of lag, and you actually don't really need it. It's way too fast for your items anyway, so why would you need to smelt like 600,000 items in one hour? Um, that's way overscaled. In case you're playing single player and want a cool furnace array like this one here, just build it in a remote area, definitely know when you're a base, and it should be fine. The hopper locking could help you a little bit, and single player is definitely not something you need to worry about, still. And if you play on a server just with your friends, so this is maybe the first ready for the whole server, you still don't need to worry about the lag because everyone agrees to it. They have this furnace array. You can definitely now consider adding so something to maybe reduce the lag a little bit because it helps everybody, but in most cases still not really necessary. So I'd say the only group of players that really need hopper locking, there's no way around it, are the ones that for some reason want to have an even larger furnace ray instead of having 1700, they want to have 7000 furnaces, just because, because it would be cool, there's no practical use for this already anymore, because it already takes more time to transport the items there than it would take to smelt them, but yeah, in that case you're trying to push some kind of limit or chase a record, then yeah, hopper loading will help you to have even more furnaces for some reason. So I really think for 99% of the players it's not necessary. You can do it, it's nice, it definitely helps, but it's not really necessary. Alright, that's all for today. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye!